My name's Andrew Denton. I've been bartending in Springfield for almost 10 years now. I work in one of those careers where it's constantly evolving and changing. This is kind of just a little bit of what I am fortunate enough to get to do on a daily basis. All right guys, welcome back. Uh, this is our second installment. I'm gonna show you uh, a very classic gin martini and then how the techniques and ideas of that uh, help birth the more modern day classic of the Cosmopolitan. So we are going to be doing a up martini and uh, traditionally with gin, you stir versus shaking. The difference between the two is stirring is a way of chilling a drink without doing it abruptly and physically more so like shaking. So it's, uh, the idea behind it is not bruising the gin or diluting out the flavor of the botanicals in gin. So uh, yeah, uh, this one's pretty simple. So uh, first we're gonna start with grabbing our coupe. Uh, the coupe is the classic version of what we would now think of as a martini glass. So basically, it's just a little up glass. Uh, what we're gonna do first, it's always important whenever you're making an up drink, is you wanna chill the glass down. So we're just gonna take a little ice and some water, and we're just gonna let this chill while we build the drink. So we'll just set this to the side. Uh, all sorts of different versions of mixing glasses. Uh, this one that I have here, is just uh, a really decorative version, but basically anything that you can put liquid into and stir is more or less an easy way of making a stirred drink. So uh, what we're gonna do first, ice this guy down. Then we're gonna go with two ounces of gin. I'm using two James. Uh, this is a distillery out of Detroit and they make really great uh, liquors. Uh, Whiskey, gin, rum, everything they do is really nice. It's small batch, it's artisanal. Uh, they just do a phenomenal job and it's not that expensive. Uh, this is probably gonna be something you'll have to pick up either with a special order at Benny's, but uh, I really suggest, uh, suggest uh, checking their brands out. They make great stuff. So we got two ounces of gin in the glass and now we're gonna use the sister of sweet vermouth, dry vermouth. A lot of people get scared by vermouth, uh, especially when it comes to martinis. They think that it's an overpowering flavor or it just makes it gross. Really what's probably happened in the past if you had bad experience is too much vermouth. Uh, this kind of vermouth, kind of like bitters, is a way of adding flavor without adding a lot of alcohol. So what you need to do really is just buy a nice bottle of dry vermouth, taste it, and see where your range is on how much you like. Uh, when somebody says they want an extra dry martini, that means literally you drop a little bit of vermouth in the glass, swirl it around, discard. And then the other version is they say they want a wet martini. That means they want a lot of dry vermouth. We're going to put about a quarter of an ounce of dry vermouth into our stirring vessel. And that's about what I like. And then we're going to stir. So basically, Whatever you use, you just wanna make sure you hold it still so that while you're stirring, it doesn't move around. And you're just gonna get in there and go to town. Stirring uh, takes a little bit longer to chill a drink than shaking, but there's actually a point where stirring or shaking, they both hit the same mark and a drink will no longer chill anymore. Since this is alcohol, it has a point where it won't lower in temperature. So then what you're really doing is you're just watering down a drink, diluting it. So to stir a cocktail, you're gonna do it for about 45 to 50 seconds, and then there's really not much else you can do. We're gonna take our chilled coupe, and we're just gonna discard that ice water and ice, kind of shake it clear. We've got our glass here, it's all chilled up. We're gonna put on our strainer. And we're just gonna hold it tight let all that come out. Just making sure that no ice chips go out with it. Uh, traditional garnish for a gin martini, uh, you could do cocktail onions. 
um, it's referred to as a Gibson. Uh, olives, obviously. I prefer lemon. So what we have here, I know in the earlier video I talked about how you could heat the peel to let that oil out. So a lighter, match, whatever. Basically, you're just gonna move it back and forth in a certain area on the fruit itself. And you're just gonna wanna heat it up. And basically, when you kind of feel it with your thumb that's warm, you're good to go. And we're gonna take our peeler here, and peel off a slice. I'm gonna see if I can get this to work. The essential oils and peels, if you do it right, see if I can get one, it'll actually spark. So the same thing that we did before, we're gonna twist this. We're gonna get all that oil on top of the drink. Then we're gonna go around the lip. We're gonna impart that oil so that every time you take a drink of this, you get that essence of lemon. And we're just gonna drop her in. All right guys, now moving on from the gin martini, we're gonna go a little bit into more modern time and uh, the Cosmopolitan. Uh, probably one of the last cocktails to come out in the past over 30 years now uh, to be considered a, a bar staple or classic. Uh, there's a lot of uh, mixed feelings about the Cosmopolitan in the sense that it is now considered to be a classic of the bar a lot of people also blame it for the death of the cocktail movement that we've seen a resurrection of in the uh, later years. But regardless, it's still a namestay. So I'm gonna show you the authentic recipe that was uh, developed in the 80s when Absolute came out with Citron, which was the first flavored vodka. For our purposes today, though, we'll be using Grey Goose. I just prefer the brand, personally. But, so, uh, much like the gin martini, we're gonna start off with a coupe or a martini glass, whatever you have at home. And uh, as we did from before, we're gonna start chilling this guy down. Just a little bit of ice, some water. And then we'll just set it to the side. Now, the difference here is we're not gonna shake, or we're not gonna stir it. I should say, we're gonna shake. Uh, the, the flavors in here are not as delicate, so we can rapidly chill this one down and uh, it won't bruise or hurt anything. We're gonna throw a ice in our tin. And we're gonna start with the vodka. Once again, I said we're gonna go with Grey Goose Citron. We're gonna do an ounce and a half of Grey Goose Citron. Then we're gonna use uh, Luxardo Triple Sec. Now, uh, there's a bunch of different brands out there, triple sec. You don't have to, It's if you're for your home bar, you don't have to break the bank. Um, Luxardo, just like the same, it's the same company that made the cherries. Uh, they also make a few different liqueurs. Uh, just got a really great flavor. Triple sec is actually orange. It's an orange liqueur. Uh, so it adds, I just really prefer this one. But like I said, uh, there's other brands out there. The Kuiper, Mr. Boston, Bold all range from eight to 10 bucks, you know? So like I said, you're not gonna, no need to break the bank on this part. I would spend more of the money on the vodka, honestly. So we're gonna take our triple sec and we're gonna use three quarters of an ounce. Now, if you like it a little sweeter, you can go a full ounce on that and reduce the amount of vodka. It's just up to you and your preference. Uh, next, lime juice, uh, fresh squeeze. Uh, once again, if you want to add more sweetness, you can use Rose's Lime, which is a sweetened lime juice. It's uh, totally up to you. Uh, this is uh, fresh lime juice, so it's going to have a real bite. So I'm only going to need about a quarter of an ounce of that. There we go. And then the final piece is cranberry juice. Uh, we're going to do two ounces of cranberry just in, in there. Great. We're going to put our cap on our tin. Make a good seal, few hands, and shake. Break the seal. Nice and cold. We're gonna take our chilled coop and we're gonna discard the ice and water. Kind of shake her dry again. Set her up. And we are gonna strain. Now, if you don't have a strainer at home, you can use 
the top of whatever your shaker is, whether it be a uh, double ten, like what I have here, or a glass. And basically all you do when you're doing that is you're gonna keep the tin loose and just adjacent enough. And then, as you can see, it'll come through without putting any ice in there. It's totally up to you, whatever you feel more comfortable with. After time, it might be doing the double tin or just using a strainer. We're gonna take our lemon, we're gonna heat that outer twist again. Now, some people will garnish this with lime, lime twist, whatever you prefer. I like the lemon because I think using that lemon vodka as a base, it adds a nice brightness to it. So we're gonna try this guy again. There we go. It's all heated up. I'm gonna twist her up, squeeze it over the drink, get all that nice oil in there, and around the world, into the drink.